Welcome to another video. Let's solve a quartic equation, but not the traditional way because the traditional way is painful. If you don't understand what I mean by painful, I like you to expand this and expand this and expand this the way it is and try to put the terms together and then solving it. Remember, because it's a fourth degree equation, you'll need to get four answers. Okay, now, I did try another way, but it wasn't the best way. So I think I have a better way to solve it, and that's why I'm making this video. Let's get into it. Whenever you have a problem like this, where this appears to look like this and appears to look like this, and it looks like there's just some, some slight differences between what you have here and what you have here, what I would recommend is just make one of them something else and then adjust the others to look like that. So we're gonna look at this. It looks like this is the one, because I tried making this my Y, but it didn't turn out well. So I'm gonna make the middle one my Y, and see how it turns out because I need to be able to find all four solutions. So what I'm gonna say is let this be equal to y. So see this, I'm gonna say let y be equal to x plus two. It is important that we know what y is. Y is x plus two. But if you look at what is here, it is x plus one. It means whatever is here is one less than this. You have to subtract one from this to get this. So I can say that this is y minus one squared. And what do I have here? This is gonna be just y. Oh, you see, we don't have to cube it, it's just y cubed. And here it's gonna be plus, this is one more than this, so this is gonna be y plus one, but it's raised to the fourth power and we still have two here. Now, before we move on, there's a reason why there's a two here, okay? There's a reason why these numbers are one, two, and three, and these powers are two, three, and four. Just know that whoever made up the problem has put some things there to make it easy for you to solve if you just do what you're supposed to do. So, what should we do? Well, we need to expand this, and we need to expand this. Okay, the expansion of this is just foiling. So let, let's just do all the work here. So we know that y minus one squared, just it's a quadratic, so we can just square it. It's gonna be y squared minus two y plus one. There, we're done. Okay, um, and then let's do this one. y plus one to the fourth. Now, if you don't know Pascal's triangle or you don't know the binomial um, expansion for this, um, then you have to foil it out. Y plus one times Y plus one, you do that four times. But you don't wanna do that if, you, um, if you've taken pre-calculus or your algebra is solid enough, do not do the, because you're gonna make mistakes. What I recommend, because the sign here is a plus, so you're not likely to make as many mistakes, what you wanna do is use Pascal's triangle. So. If you don't remember, this is what it is. Okay, so when you, something is raised to power one, you only have one term. If it is raised to power two like this, a binomial raised to power two like this, you'll get three terms. One is going to be one, the other is gonna be two, the next one is gonna be one. The minus sign is coming from this sign here. Okay, so you have one, three, three, and one, it means when, you, when the power is raised to three, this is the, what you get. When the power is raised to four, you get one, four, six, four, one. You notice that I'm just adding these two to get this. Add these two, you get this. Add these two, you get this, okay? That's how Pascal's triangles, triangle works. So when I expand this, I expect all my, inti my coefficients to be one, four, six, four, one. So I'm just gonna write them. One, four, six, four, one. And what numbers will I put there? Well, I know y will be raised to power four, so the first one is y raised to power four, then y raised to power three, then y raised to power two, then y raised to power one, then y raised to power zero. The other one is just one, so expanding this is quite 
interesting because you don't need to struggle with anything. So that's it. I just put plus signs there and the expansion is done. Okay, so now I need to put all of these, this together with this, with this. Okay, let's just put all the terms that are corresponding to each other together. So I'm going to put y squared minus 2y plus 1 here, y squared minus 2y plus 1. And I have y cubed still hanging somewhere here, plus y cubed. Okay, so if I put all of these together, I add them all together, I'm talking about this expansion, I'm going to get y to the fourth plus 5y cubed plus 7y squared. I'm going to get plus 2y plus 2. That's what I'm going to get. So I'm going to go here now and write this. Now, I told you there was a reason this 2 was here. The 2 was here so you can take care of this 2. So if you subtract 2 from both sides, you're not going to have any 2 anymore here, and this is going to be 0. So I'm just going to rewrite this expression to be equal to 0. So now our equation is equal to 0, and because of that, it is easy for you to look. Every term here has a y, so I can take out the y. So I can go here and say that this is equal to y. If you factor it out, you have y cubed plus 5y squared plus 7y plus 2 is equal to zero by the zero product property when the product of two things is equal to zero one of them must be zero or both of them will have to be zero so it looks like our y is equal to zero and this cubic equation is equal to zero so let's say so we have y is equal to zero is a solution okay and what does that mean if y equals zero what did we say y was x plus two so we can say x plus two is equal to zero implies that what x equals minus two this is the first solution to our problem x is equal to negative two Okay, so the next part is, remember we're supposed to get four answers. We just got one. So now, let's go hunting. Now, look at this other part. We know that this second part will have to give us three solutions, right? So, so what do you do when you cannot clearly see the factors? You try, so that we're going to do three things, okay? Um, some, if you may know it, you should know it, okay? It's part of algebra. The first thing is what you call the rational root theorem. We're going to use it. What does it say? It says whenever you have a polynomial and you think it's possible to factor it, it means it has rational roots. That's the meaning. If you can factor a polynomial, the polynomial has rational roots. If you cannot factor it, it has irrational roots. So let's assume we can factor it. What are the possible factors that you can get when you solve it what are the possible rational um, factors the zeros that are rational you're going to get well you just have to pay attention to the very last term which is always the constant and compare it to the first term well the first term here is one so what is two divided by one it's two now you take the number two and think of all the numbers that can divide two how many numbers can divide two well it's just one and two. So what the rational roots theorem says is that after you've divided two by this number and you get two, all the numbers that can divide two without a remainder are one, two, minus one, and minus two. Those are all the numbers that are capable of dividing this without any problem. You won't get a decimal or a fraction, right? Now those are the numbers that you should plug into this function and see if you will get a remainder of zero. Now I'm moving from the rational roots theorem to the remainder theorem. What does the remainder theorem say? The remainder theorem says if any of these numbers is a rational root, if you plug it into, is a root, not rational root, if any of these numbers is a root, if you plug it into this equation, you'll get zero at the end. Just we use it to replace each of the y's. So now what are we going to do? We're going to take one of these numbers and plug it in. 
If it doesn't give us zero, it's not the answer we're looking for. You take the next one, you take the next one. But before you move on, I want to tell you what numbers you should use. Now, look at all the signs in this. This is positive, 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 positive. You cannot add positive numbers and get zero. The only way you can get a zero from adding things together is if some of them are positive and some of them are negative. So you don't want to use one or two because no matter what you do, your answers are going to be positive. So ignore these. So the numbers you want to try are negative one and negative two because all the signs here are positive. Do you see why I told you whoever made the question understands what's going to happen? So now let's plug in negative one. If you plug in negative one here, we're going to get negative one because it's negative one cubed. Plug in negative one here, it's going to be one times five, that's plus five. If you plug in negative one here, you're going to get minus seven, negative, okay, this one is just plus two. Let's see, does this give us zero? How do you do it? Just add all the positive numbers together. Five plus two is seven. Negative numbers together, it's negative eight. So seven and negative eight are not the same, so you don't get a zero. Let's try minus two. If you plug in minus two here, you're going to get negative eight. Minus two here gives you four times five, you're going to get 20 plus 20. But minus two here, you're going to get minus 14 plus two. Now, let's put all the positives together. You get 20 plus two, that's 22. Put all the negatives together, you get minus 22. So minus 22 plus 22, you get your zero. So it means this is a rational root of this equation. So it means y equals negative 2 is another solution. Okay, so let's do that. y equals negative 2 is a solution. Therefore, so uh, what does that mean? It means that we can come back here again and say x plus 2 equals negative 2 implies, what does it mean? It means x equals, if you subtract 2 from both sides, it's negative 4. There you go. So we got two solutions now. We need two more. So what should you do with the information you have? Well, it's easy. When I'm going to go to the third thing you're going to see in this video, it is called synthetic division. So the next thing we want to do is synthetic division. And how do you use it? Since you know this is a factor, what you want to do is, it's a factor of this. Don't go back to use this one because it wouldn't help us. This is the one that helps us because it's from here. So if you divide this by this, you're going to get a quadratic. The degree will reduce to y squared. So now, you're going to say, I'm going to be dividing something by negative 2. What is that thing I'm going to be dividing? It's this. But you don't need to write everything here. All you have to write are the coefficients. 1 plus 5, plus 7, plus 2. Just write them out. 1, 5, 7, 2. Don't forget that we know what these are. This is y cubed. This is y squared. Okay? The degree is going to drop when you divide by this. So, this is the setup. Always put a 0 here. Always put a 0. And all you do is add. So, the first step is add 1 to 0. What would you get? You get 1. Then multiply what is 1 times minus 2. This is actually from long division, but this is cleaner because you don't, have, you don't make mistakes as many times as you do if you're doing long division. So 1 times minus 2 gives you minus 2. Put the minus 2 here. Add 3. 3 times minus 2 is minus 6. Put minus 6 here. Add 1. 1 times minus 2 is minus 2. Add 0. You see the 0? That was the 0 we got when we substituted this into this equation. You will always get a 0 here if this actually is a factor or a root. So we have y squared plus 3y plus 1 is equal to 0 is a solution. Do you notice what just happened? The degree of this used to be 3, but after the synthetic division, we have reduced the degree by 1 because we got one of our answers. So what is left is squared just y 
and this is one. So now this is what we need to solve. Okay, so, and this one cannot be factored, but we know what they call the quadratic formula. So we're just gonna use the quadratic formula and get the rest of our answers. So let's go. We know that y will be equal to minus b. Remember, minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. That's the quadratic formula. So this is our b. So it's going to be minus 3 plus or minus the square root of b squared. The square root, what is b squared is going to be 9. Minus 4 times 1 times 1. That's going to be minus 4ac is going to be 4 all over 2. So we go here and say x plus 2 is equal to, my, let's split this. It's going to be minus 3 over 2 plus or minus um, the square root of, this is 5 over 2. So we have, we're going to break this up into x3 because we've gotten x Oh, this is x. Let's call this x2. Let's call this x1. When we move this guy over here, it's going to become minus 2. But let's write it as minus 4 over 2 so we can easily add it to this. So it's minus 4 minus 3 is going to be minus 7 over 2 plus square root of 5 over 2. And the last answer, x4, will be minus 7 over 2 minus over 2. And those are the answers. Tell me in the comments if you did this another way that was more effective. I know I explained too many things or so many things. It depends on who you are. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.